So the next type of conversion we're going to do is probably a more complicated one, but uh, very useful when we're building robust programs that uh, need to handle any type of crazy input that the user is going to type in. It allows us to make sure that the computer doesn't en enter in stuff that's going to crash our program or whatnot. And that command is the try parse. Notice the, the two keywords there, try and parse. Try represents the fact that it's going to attempt to do the conversion. Parse is just a term that we use when we try and convert or when we try and break apart a string into um, usable chunks. So in this case, we're trying to break apart the string into um, data that we can use. So uh, just to quickly refine what we're talking about here, a try parse attempts to convert a string to a different type. Notice that key part there, a string. It can only convert a string to another type. So we can't go from double to int or into double or anything like that. So it must be from a string to a different type. It stores the value and whether the conversion was successful or not. So that's very key. So for example, if we tried to convert uh, 87.8 into um, a double, or sorry, into a double from string, it should match no problem and it should work. So the data will store 87.8 into our resulting variable and it will store whether it was successful or not. So if it did successfully convert it, it will store a true. If it failed on the conversion, well, that's another case altogether. If it couldn't do it, say, for example, we tried to convert the word boat into an integer, that's going to fail. So the success is going to be a false. And the value that's going to be stored, well, what is it going to store if it's not a usable, if it can't do the conversion? Well, it actually stores the value 0. So it won't break your program. So if you try to use that number in something, as long as you don't try and divide by it, you should be okay. You shouldn't run into any problems. It'll just be a logic error. It'll break your program in terms of what you expect your results to be. So how do we actually handle this? Well, we need to do some new rules. So it's not just create a variable and store the and convert it anymore. We need a couple variables. So the first thing we're going to create is we need to create our holder variable. Create holder variable for the value and we also need a holder variable for the success so that means it's got to be a different type it's going to be a bool because it's going to handle true or false Later on in the course, we're going to learn how to read this true or false and actually use it to effectively create our programs um, so the users can actually interact with them a lot better. And then, of course, step three is actually do the conversion. Now, you're going to see a few new keywords here. Um, so this is why it's a little bit more complicated. So let's follow this step. So now, in our previous examples, the uh, mark that was stored was stored as a string. Now in this example, or sorry, it was started as a double. Now in this example, because the try parse is, can only do from string to another type, we're actually going to try and do it like this. So we're going to create our originally we're going to create our mark as a string. So we're going to say string mark is equal to eighty-seven point eight. Notice that it's all in text. And now we're going to create my holder variable for the value. So I want an int mark and it doesn't have a value at this point but I also need a holder variable for the success so let's say bool was successful we'll get into naming conventions of booleans later but essentially it boils down to the name of your variable should be a yes or no question was it successful or was it not so if it was successful that means the result of this variable would be true now we actually just need to do the conversion now this is where it could be um, a little bit more complicated because there's a little bit more code involved. So it's still going to be an assignment statement. So we have our equal sign and on the left side of that equal sign is going to be the variable for our success. Oops, that should be a whole variable. So it's going to be our variable for the success. It's not the value. So in here we're going to write down was successful. So whatever is going to be on the right-hand side of the equal sign is going to be the expression that's going to result in either a true or a false to be stored inside of what's successful. So to do this, now we're going to have to do a little bit more syntax, and we're going to start it off with the type of data we're trying to convert to. So in our case, we're going to try and convert to an int32. So int32. 
dot. Now, as soon as we put in that dot, we're going to get a lot of options again, but this time we're looking specifically for the try parse. Now, this is another action. That's an S. This is another action, which means we require brackets. So, so far we had was successful, assign it the value in 32try parse. Whatever gets put in these brackets is going to be used in the attempt at the conversion. So, in previous examples, we've only ever had one value inside these brackets. So, whether that was um, text using a message box or whether that was a simple value inside of a convert uh, convert.2 in 32 or convert.2 string or whatever um, in this case we're actually gonna have two values and whenever we have two values two or more values we separate each one with a comma so for example in this case what we're gonna start off with is the string that we're trying to convert well that's the mark variable so I'm gonna put in mark that's what we're trying to convert now what we need here is the variable that we're going to store the result in. Oh, I made a very big mistake over here in the very beginning. Um, we can't have two variables of the same name. So I'm just going to erase this and I'm going to fix that name to converted mark. Apologies. And now over here, we're going to write in converted mark. I'm going to leave a little bit of space there because we're going to have to add in a new, key to new keyword. The keyword that we're going to have to add here is the keyword out. Don't worry about uh, what that is for now. Just assume that you need it to actually get this to work. Um, we'll get into that later on. So if we read this, it's going to say try to parse the mark string into an int32 store the results into converted mark and store the successful results into was successful. So now we can now use converted mark as we see fit as long as the success was true. So this is the problem. Will 87.8 be successfully converted into an integer? Well it won't. Try parse is much more strict so the data must be perfect. In that case what that means is we can't convert 87.8 into an integer, but we could convert 87. So we got to be careful how we're actually going to handle this. So um, in this case, what we're going to have to do is if we wanted to actually get the singular integer type out there, we could actually do a series of conversions if we wanted to go that route, if our original data was stored as a string, which it may be. So in that case, we would have to convert mark first into a double so instead of try instead of in 32 dot try parse we could do double dot try parse and store it into a double mark value or mark variable and then we could convert that variable into an integer if we wanted to go along those lines so in this example here though since the parse would actual f actually fail if the conversion would actually since the conversion would actually fail the resulting value inside a converted mark would actually be a zero so the next module, I'm going to go through a quick example that will actually show you all these different uh, nuances of the three uh, conversion types that we just discussed.